Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we continue chapter 2, Forces and Motion 1 on topic 2.334 part 1. So in this topic, there are three uh, learning standards. So in this video, I just want to discuss two learning standards. The first one, explain with example, free fall motion and gravitational acceleration. And number two is experiment eh, to determine the value of gravitational acceleration. And the third one, I will discuss in my next video, eh, free fall part two. Free fall motion and gravitational acceleration. So what is the meaning of word? Free fall. An object experiences free fall if the motion of the object is affected only by gravitational force. As an example, you can see a coconut that fall. Of course, there will be air resistance. But if the value of air resistance is too small until we can say it is negligible, meaning no air resistance act on the coconut. So, a free-falling object which does not experience the action of other forces such as air resistance or friction, we call it free-fall. Look at this video. There are, there are steel ball and a feather that drop eh, in vacuum. Observe what happens to the steel ball and the feather. You can see the steel ball and the feather drop at the same time. Finally, uh, reach, reach the ground at the same time. So what can you infer from the video? Or what can you conclude from the video? So in vacuum, there is, there is no air resistance. The only force that acts to pull down the feather and the steel ball is gravitational force. So these two objects, steel ball and feather, experiences free fall because there's only one force act on, on the both objects, eh? there is gravitational force. Okay, so you must be able to define eh, the meaning of free fall. So free fall is, is the motion of the object that affected only by gravitational force. Okay? Okay, this one is also in the same case, uh, feather and uh, an and apple. Uh. Falling objects and air resistance. Now we want to relate okay, between falling object and air resistance. In vacuum, both feather and apple falls at the same rate, same as the video uh, that you observed before. Uh. Reason, in vacuum, there is no air. It means there is no air resistance. So no air resistance, so surface area and mass makes no difference. Okay? So the gravitational pull act on the object causes them to fall down eh, at the same rate. Okay? Okay, look at activity 2.5. This one you can do it in the lab or you can do it at home. Eh? This one a very simple activity. You can see this person draw a eh, a without crumple up piece of paper and this one a crumple up piece of paper the one which is not crumple will reach the floor slower compared to the one that crumple this one drop faster okay so what we can say about this activity is that there are more air resistance act on this non crumple up piece of paper. And this one, less air resistance on crumple up piece of paper. So this one is related to uh, area of the paper that in contact with air. The larger the surface area, the higher the air resistance. So the higher air resistance will cause the paper to drop down slower. 
Okay. So acceleration due to gravity. Let's say this person dropped a ball. Huh? Okay. At zero second, V1 is zero. Initial velocity is zero. At one second, V equals to 9.8. At two second, V is 19.6. 3 second V 29.4 4 second V equals 39.2 So during each second of the ball the speed of ball changes by 9.8 meter per second The change in speed is due to gravity so the gravity caused the ball to speed up Hence the acceleration in this case is called acceleration due to gravity so, G equals to 9.8 meter per second squared. The acceleration of a free falling object caused by gravitational force is known as gravitational acceleration. The average value of Earth's gravitational acceleration is 9.81 meter per second to the power negative 2. So, this one can be determined uh, throughout the experiment. Refer to your textbook, Experiment 2.1. We want to determine the value of gravitational acceleration. So, G can be determined by using photogate or ticker timer. A ticker timer we have discussed earlier in linear motion, where we use ticker timer to determine acceleration. So, it means we can do it eh, to determine acceleration of your object that fall down. From the ticker tape, we can calculate the acceleration. So in this experiment, we want to use photogate. In this experiment, what we need to have here, the apparatus, you can see steel ball and electromagnetic release. We need two photogates. This is the first one. This is second photogate. And you can see the photogates are connected to electronic timer to record time. Let's say the first photogate is placed at distance of S1 from the steel ball. Measure from center to center, from the center of steel ball to the center of the photogate. The second photogate is at distance S2 from the steel ball. So the distance between the two photogate is S2 minus S1. You can mark it as H. The procedure of the experiment is place the second photogate so that distance is 30 cm away from the first photogate. Ensure the steel ball can fall through both photogates into the container. Release the steel ball from the electromagnetic release. Record the time taken when the steel ball passes through the first photogate. We record as T1. So when the ball passes through second photogate, you record as T2. Then uh, we can repeat uh, the step 3 and 6 to distance uh, 40, 50, 60 and 70. Okay. So this is sample of uh, re, uh, re, uh, value uh, that we record through the experiment. This is the value of T1. This is the value of T2. So for 30 cm, we record T1 0.247 second, T2 0.349 second. Then we can repeat with 40, 50, 60 and 70 and then record the value. Given the formula to determine G equals to 2H divided by T2 squared minus T1 squared. Okay, later we discuss how we get this formula. Okay, use the formula to calculate the value of G. Okay, for each of the separation distance, so you get for 30 cm 9.87, 40 cm 9.71, 50 cm 9.83, 60 cm 9.82, 70 cm 9.74. Be careful with the unit. Eh? This one is meter per second squared. Eh? This one is cm, so need to convert to meter. Okay. Analysis of data determine the value of G using the formula G equals 2H divided by T2 squared minus T1 squared. Okay, then calculate the average. So we can calculate the average, we get G equals to 9.80 meter second to the power 
negative 2. How we get the formula just now? From the linear motion equation, displacement S of a free falling object is S equals UT plus half GT squared. When the steel ball passes through the first water gate, the vertical displacement is S1 and the time taken is T1. Yeah, we have marked in the diagram eh, earlier S1, eh, distance between the steel ball and the first water gate. Then you record T1. When the steel ball passes through the second water gate, the vertical displacement is S2 and time taken is T2. Therefore, we can uh, produce equation uh, for first photo gate and second photo gate. S1 equals to UT1 plus half GT1 squared. S2 equals UT2 plus half GT2 squared. The steel ball is dropped. Thus, initial velocity equals to zero. And the separation distance between the two photo gates, H, equals to S2 minus S1. So just use these two uh, equations. So you take S2 minus S1. U equals to 0 here. Okay, this one 0, this one also 0. So half G factorized T2 squared minus T1 squared. Thus we get G equals 2H divided by T2 squared minus T1 squared. Okay, from the experiment, we get the average uh, value of G is 9.8. 0 meter second negative 2 is quite the same as the value of G at equator. G equals to 9.78. Because experiment is carried out at equator. Near, the, the places is near to the equator. So the value of G is quite the same. Okay, As we know, uh, later we will discuss, the value of G actually here uh, will be differ depends on the position. Okay, Look at this one. Earth is not actually perfect square. So it depends on where we carried out the experiment. For example, this one equator. So the value G equals to 9.78 meter second negative 2. At North Pole is 9.83 meter second negative 2. Why? Eh? You look at the distance. Distance from equator to center of the Earth is 6,372 kilometer. But distance from pole to the center of the earth is only 6,350 kilometer. So meaning the further from the center of the earth, the smaller the gravitational acceleration. Okay, so the distance from equator to the center of the earth is further than the distance of pole to the center of the earth. Thus, the value of the gravitational acceleration at the equator, equator is smaller than uh, the value at the North Pole. So I will stop here uh, for my, the first part eh, in the 2.3 free fall. So I will discuss uh, problem solving in the next video uh, free fall eh, 2. Uh, part 2.